In the last video I already revealed that it's proven that money is created out of thin air. But the worst is yet to come. Banks do not only create almost all of the existing money, the money which they demand back as interest has never been created at all. In other words, bank interests don't exist in the money supply. So interest can be paid with money. So how then? Give for example with your collateral, not with money, because for the interests it is not created unfortunately. This is also the reason why the real economy has to be in competition constantly. The competition the so-called fair competition only emerges simply because the enterprises of real economy has to fight for money permanently, which they take away from others in order to pay their own interests of their own banks. Concerning this, a little example. On a planet with 10 beings, money in form of leather pieces is implemented. Everyone gets 10 pieces at an interest rate of 10%. So in the end, 110 pieces have to be paid back, despite the fact only 100 exist. Where does the rest come from? One of them has to lose all of the leather pieces just to pay the interest. Since nobody wants to end up without money, all will attempt to earn as much as possible. But no matter how much they attempt to, in the end, at a certain point, there still will be a lack of money. And where do you get money from? That's what I'm saying. And so everybody thinks competition in economy is a good thing. But because of the money for the interest, the competition only arises. Another little simple example, if you haven't understood it yet totally, you can see here. Suppose there are only two businessmen in the whole country and we employ everyone else. We borrow $100 each, we pay $90 out in wages and expenses and allow $10 profit, which is our wage. This means the total purchasing power is $90 plus $10 twice, so $200. Yet to pay you bank, we must sell all our products for $210. If one of us succeeds and sells all his products for $105, the other man can only get $95. Also part of his goods cannot be sold, as there is no money left to buy them. He will still owe you $10 and can only repay this by borrowing more. The system is impossible. The whole movie is also very recommendable. The basics of money are represented easily. Let's get to another crucial point and to the fact that the formal money system has to collapse. Or let's better say already collapsed and only is seemingly kept up by crimes of politicians. And now we all together have to consider something new. The compound interest leads to the fact that the amount of existing money is growing faster and faster. We in Germany always only hear of Mrs. Merkel who says we need growth, growth, growth. Also most other politicians talk about that. You also heard Hillary Clinton in uh, my last video talking about it. But the economical growth of material things which they mean, cannot grow as fast as the increasement of money. Because the amount on which to pay interest is rising every year on the level of interest. If that amount isn't paid back, so the interest amount also increases every year. And every year the amount of the interest will increase faster and faster. If this was too fast for you, you can look it up more detailed by Burns and over here I translate it. This exponential growth is an elementary reason why the debts of countries are verifiably growing. Now if you think you're not concerned with interests, you're not lending money from banks, 
you don't take credits, you're wrong. Because interests are included in every single product. In every price a producer defines, the interest is a part of it. Because the producer had to take a credit on his own in order to produce his good. For example, to buy machines for it. And this applies to everything. Potatoes, bread, musical instruments. On average, the price of drinking and wastewater includes 15% interest. Rents, in most cases, include more than 50% cost of capital. So, 30 to 40% what you had spent so far has only been interest. So, this is not the case because we're too lazy. Don't get talked into believing we're too lazy or the Greeks or whoever. Now, according to those who invested a bit of money, thinking I'm on the winner's side because of the interests I get. If you thought so far related to justice and redistribution that money-having people have to pay more taxes and this benefits not so many people by social welfare or whatever, no, it's the total opposite. There is a systematical redistribution to the money-having people. Every investor is happy about earning interest. If the interest earned is higher than his expenses for interest, he has made money. But what about expenses through the hidden interest costs? Let's look at the German population grouped into 10 equal parts. 80% pay more interest than what they earn through investments, savings or insurances. For another 10%, interest payments and earnings even out. No more than 10% actually make a profit. If we just look at the difference, we realize how the middle class bears most of the interest payments. Only the richest 10% of the population benefit. They receive about 60% of all interest payments, passive income that is not the result of work. Only if you invested 500,000 or a million euros, you make a positive business. We sum up. Due to the interest, we have to be in competition, whereas it never can be paid back totally. The money supply rises exponentially through it, and only 5 to 10 percent of human do get profits out of it, without effort. Who still sees an advantage in the interest? Wake up. The flaw is the system. <laughs>